Oscar Wilde himself was and is one of the most notorious figures of Western literature. Um, had a fascinating life. To me, his life is just as fascinating as anything that he wrote. Um, I love trying to sort out like who was blackmailing whom after he died and whose accounts of what happened are actually true. It's, it gives me endless amusement. But um, Wilde himself was a very contrary figure, um, even like from the time he was studying in Oxford in the 1870s. Um, he said, um, I think he was sent down, that was he was expelled uh, from Oxford, and when he went to London, he said that, I'm off to London, either to become famous, and if I cannot become famous, to become notorious. And he certainly achieved that. Um, he, in his writings, he's always trying to debunk social norms of the late Victorian era. Um, so, like, he, he'll make fun of um, Victorian ideas of, like, what the empire is supposed to be. And he'll make fun of um, ideas of how women are supposed to behave. And um, he'll even make fun of artists, too, even though he himself was a, a great aesthete. Um, he was very influenced by the aesthetic movement, which in the mid-19th century was interested in returning to uh, a lot of medieval taste um, in design, and also the idea of art for its own sake. And so he didn't like the Victorian obsession with like morals and how to be the most like pious and the most giving person you could always be because I mean I think he had seen a lot of the terrible things that had happened because of the Empire which is trying to further Empire for its own sake because they were convinced that the British Empire was the best thing for the world um, so when he writes a story he'll take like a trope um, of society um, or a trope in literature and he'll turn both things upon their heads and just he just turns the whole world upside down in his writings and does everything in the most witty way um, he uses wit as a tool to like disarm people and to teach them something but he always does it in the most frivolous way um, and to me that's one of the most charming things about Oscar Wilde because he's not standing there sermonizing he's standing there like making you laugh at your own downfalls and making a society look ridiculous and helping them see um, how they can move on and become a more like vibrant society that understands art and life in a more... Oscar Wilde was uh, born in Dublin uh, October 17th, 1854 and um, his mother was a poet and she translated old Irish poems into like modern English. She was very involved in like Irish nationalism. Of course the Irish had been like suppressed by the English for centuries. Um, they were right there in the British Isles with them but the Irish um, country had suffered incredible hardships uh, like for example the potato famine in the 1840s and the English government just sat there on their hands and didn't do anything to help the the nation that was struggling right next to them that was part of their na like empire part of the intimate circle of their empire um, yeah crazy things there so Wilde interestingly didn't take on his Irishness as as um, earnestly as he could have, but his mother certainly did. He would pull the Irish card occasionally at, um, at times that were rather curious. Uh, but he, let's see, so Wilde grew up um, in Ireland and he went to school there and then he went to Trinity College Dublin um, when he was in like his uh, late teens, twenties and then he got a scholarship to go study down at Oxford because of a poem he had written and his tutor uh, in Dublin who was a great mentor of his said oh Oscar you're not smart enough here for us in Dublin you better go on down to Oxford and so he did on a full ride scholarship and like I said he was kind of expelled because one term he went with that tutor from Dublin to Greece on a trip and didn't tell any of his professors that he was going to be gone he just left and didn't show up for classes and they were like you can't do this and he was like, alright, so I won't. I'll just go to London. <laughs> um, yeah, he may have come back to finish his degree later, but I'm not entirely sure. He may have had two undergraduate degrees. But he studied classics at Oxford and became really interested in like Greek ideals and Greek tropes. And um, I suppose, yeah, definitely Greek mythology plays a huge role in his poetry and his, uh, his stories. Also, Christianity does too. 
Wilde's family was Protestant, and Wilde had always been interested in the Catholic Church, um, the Roman Catholic Church, and he loved, you know, the beauty and the decadence, um, and he was very close to joining the church several times, but couldn't bring himself to, um, to, you know, uh, to be that strict. He was actually um, ousted from the will of one of his uncles because he was so close to becoming uh, a Roman Catholic, and the uncle was like, nope, he's not in the will anymore. Um, let's see, so that's Oscar Wilde in like his 20s. When he was in his late 20s, um, in, th in 1881, he was invited um, by, uh, by an agency in New York to give a literary tour of America, um, because Gilbert and Sullivan, who wrote the, that, that musical, The Pirates of Penzance, um, they had come out with a new uh, comic opera called Patience, and it was a hit in London, and their agent in New York was like, why don't you send this over to America? And they're like, but some of the people in even London don't get all of our jokes. And she was like, well, why don't you send over like Oscar Wilde to give a literary tour so we know what you're making fun of? <laughs> and so he took a year-long tour of America. Was It was off to a slow start, but then he was a great success. And um, after he came back, he was um, like on his rising you know, wave of fame. Um, he wrote lots of plays, is what he was mainly known for, and poems. Um, and then in the 1890s, he was like at the height of his fame, and he was just writing golden, golden literature all over the place. Um, had some legal trouble, um, and was imprisoned for two years of hard labor. Um, and after he was let out of prison, he um, moved to Paris, where he was kind of like an outcast, and died three years later in um, in this old hotel. And they say that his last words were, um, my wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. One or the other of us has got to go. Yeah, he died in 18, I think November, 1897. And um, there was a whole lot of drama after he died. Um, and. Some of his acquaintances ended up writing like biographies of themselves and of him, and it's really fascinating to try and like wade through the the politics of who's lying about what actually happened and who's being truthful. Um, but it's all all fascinating to me. Um, and Wilde has like come to be this figure in society of somebody who won't um, go with the norm, somebody who is so like devoted to themselves that they will like sacrifice everything to not have to wear a mask. And to me, Dorian Gray is a book wherein um, a character is given a mask to wear and they can like hide anything that they want to be. Um, and then they can go live it and still appear like pure and spotless before everybody else. Um, about uh, the novel Oscar Wilde said that Lord Henry is me as the world sees me, and Basil Howard is me as I see myself, and Dorian is how I would wish to be in other ages, perhaps. Um, yeah, quite a fascinating reception of that novel. Anything else you want to hear about Oscar Wilde? Do you want to say anything about his legal troubles? Uh, should we put the PG rating on this? <laughs> Oscar Wilde was um, lovers with this young fellow named Lord Alfred Douglas. And um, everybody called him Bosey. And Bosey was a student at Oxford at Maudlin College, where Oscar Wilde also went uh, when he was in Oxford. And um, Bosey's father did not at all like that they were together. And uh, his, his father's name was the Marquis of Queensbury. And one day the Marquis of Queensbury left a calling card at, at Oscar Wilde's club. And um, about like Oscar Wilde and his relationship with his with uh, the Marquis's son, and um, the Marquis of Queensbury was a very overbearing and um, brutish character. Um, and he, anyway, Bosey was like, you, "You, I can't deal with my father encroaching on my life anymore. You have to do something about this." And Oscar Wilde decided to um, sue him for libel. Um, that is like sue him like for slander. Uh, which was very strange because what he had written was true about Oscar Wilde, and it's still a mystery to Wilde scholars why Oscar Wilde decided to take on this legal trial, which 
clearly he was going to lose. We don't know if he thought maybe he could get out of it and just say, like, his father, um, Wilde's father, when Wilde was a son, got in some interesting legal trials because Wilde's father was an ear and eye surgeon, and he apparently had an inappropriate relationship with one of his patients. Um, but essentially, they ruled in favor of Wilde's father and charged um, the woman, like, one, one pence or something. Um, or they charged him one pence? Anyway. It was insulting to the girl, and um, it made Oscar Wilde's father look kind of just like this amusing rapscallion. Um, and so perhaps that influenced Wilde's decision to, to pursue a legal battle. Um, it could be that he did want to actually share his voice to the world and argue that his relationship with uh, Bozy was not, shouldn't have been a problem, shouldn't have been anybody else's business. Um, but he gave a very, very rousing speech. I would highly recommend looking at the legal transcripts to anybody who's interested. The Victorian public actually was very receptive and they gave Wilde many uh, applauses during the trials and the judge, Carson, was quite, quite put off with them because uh, they wouldn't stop making noises, the audience. Um, but yeah, Wilde um, lost the legal battle and was forced to serve in Reading Jail in, um, it's like between London and Oxford, and served for two years of hard labor uh, with, sen with a sentence of gross indecency. Uh, and that, <coughs> that has a really fascinating legal history that one can research if they want to. <laughs> yeah, the, the trials of Oscar Wilde um, were definitely a seminal thing, and they're certainly probably some of the most witty legal transcripts of a trial that anybody could ever read. And also, uh, blazed a trail for um, for people in his situation, and he's now he's definitely a figure. Um, he's he's like one of the great gay icons of history, and um, we're glad to have him. <laughs> that is a beginning of a look into why I love Oscar Wilde. <laughs>